Hi, I'm Todd Gannon, and this is the SciArc Channel. I'm here with Ray Cappy at his house in the Pacific Palisades to talk about um, the early days of SciArc. Ray, thanks very much for joining us here and letting us shoot this here. This is a real treat. Um, so, I, w I guess I wanted to start kind of at the end. Uh, I've been going through speaking with all of the directors, so didn't do them quite in reverse order, but we arrive at the first director last. So maybe we could kind of start there and talk about uh, Cyark's early interest in getting beyond the norms of architectural education. We were always looking to the future. And uh, I, I thought the future was not about static libraries or even, even static museums, I always thought things should be a little more in motion. And uh, the, the idea of, of, of video uh, was something that was important. We didn't have the equipment, but so I sublet a piece of the first building mm -hmm. to a company that was doing video. <clears throat> and that made it easy for us to, you know, to do that in every, every situation. And we always had students who were interested in being a part of that. Yeah. And uh, we didn't do a great job at that time, but we did a, at least we did a job to, uh, you know, that would record. Well, now you can go back and see some of those videos on the on the media archive and um, what I've always wondered actually is uh, how did you distribute that? So you shot them on, on Super 8 or something but w once they were made then what happened? Nothing we just they were just put aside uh -huh. <coughs> and uh, pretty much archived if you really want to get down to it but we thought it was important because we had early on, you know, many important architects coming through and, mm -hmm. and people in the professions and design professions and planning professions. And uh, some of them were getting to an age where, <laughs> more like I am, <laughs> and, and uh, the thought that they, they might not be around uh, too much longer and, and we at least would have them recorded. Mm -hmm. And so when we did our, the, the, the conference that was the first of these that really tried to put it together was uh, the one in 1976. And at that one, we took architects from various points in time in, in the LA area, I mm -hmm. mean, I was, I was very local in a sense in, at the beginning in, in this way. And we took architects through various stages of age groups. And Shelley uh, interviewed, like you're doing, a lot, a lot of these people. And uh, we, we thought, well, you know, probably would be useful someday. And, and, but Beyond that, I thought students should uh, should learn this way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought a, a good learning process is one in which you <coughs> search out things that you really think are important to you. Right. And uh, today, I mean, most people like to do that through books, but you could also just do it by watching videos. And you can watch them over until you're you get enough saturation that you feel, you know, yeah. comfortable with them. 
And I also thought that would be a form of education. I mean, we were sitting next door to a uh, a guy who was, I mean, who had a big hole in the ground that was going to be a subterranean parking place that he never went ahead with, who was the owner of the properties. And he would collect stuff. Yeah. And there were some really interesting things in there, I thought. Like what? Oh, airplane wings. <laughs> Maybe. And, and, you know, David, David Hertz just did a house that way, but I said, why didn't you do that when you were at Sark? <laughs> the, the, the wings were there yeah. and stuff. But I'm just saying that uh, I just thought, you know, they might have a good time with some of this stuff. It does seem to me that the, the, there was a kind of play in those early days, and I think that play still exists in the school between... Um, a fairly ambitious kind of outreach. You know, we'll go and do projects with, uh, say, filmmakers or various kind of consultants that wouldn't normally find their way into a conventional architectural curriculum. But then on the other hand, there was, uh, there's always been a very careful attention to, um, I'll use the technical term, making stuff, uh, in that, you know, even out at Cal Poly, we're building these large structures. One of the early moves it's, that you made at SARC was to acquire quite a bit of po property in Topanga that I guess had been earmarked for spaces to make things, for students to do experimental con constructions. And tell me a little bit more about that. That, on one hand, kind of pushing architecture out into, you know, bringing it into contact with fields that it normally wasn't so close to, and at the same time really digging deep within the field through construction. The faculty were comprised of these people from various areas. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's just, it was interesting to me that most people really enjoy the process of teaching, particularly if they've more like I was in architecture, I was primarily a practitioner, even though I had a lot of other ideas, but I was a, pra you know, I was a practitioner, architect, not an academic type. And uh, so I could call up almost anybody. I, I could call you know, down to City Hall and get somebody who works in economics with the city. Mm -hmm. and. Do you want to do lectures? Oh, yeah. Okay. Come on out. <laughs> you can do that. So that, that was the way we kind of can move out easily. The idea <coughs> of using the city as a whole, was that wasn't my idea. That was in, in the works at that time, yeah. alternative education processes and alternative methods. And so... But I liked that idea, and I thought that's the way you, that's the real learning process. The real learning process is one in which you ask questions if you have a problem, and you go out and you solve it through the proper asking of questions. I always thought it was more, more interesting to go back to some of the subject matter when you really thought you could use it. Mm -hmm. You know, if uh, you had a project or a problem that was dealing with psychological or social matters or whatever they might be, uh, you then would go and search it out. And today, of course, it's pretty simple because mm -hmm. you got <laughs> Google it in and out it comes. Well, uh, some uh, version of it comes Some out. version. <laughs> So if you want to go more, be, get into it more, you, you have to spend some time in libraries right. <laughs> or wherever else you get the information. And I thought, you know, it, it's kind of crazy to just be fed information, take a test, feed it back, and forget about it in a week. You know, what, what, what good is that? That's not real education a real learning, really, is all that I would call it. So was that kind of thing bothering you out of Cal Poly, or? Not, not really, because we, we were breaking all the rules. Right. 
you were asking earlier, you know, we were we were doing inflatables and I was driving the fire department crazy. And then I, we, we decided we would do this project out in the field that would be close packing because we that was mega structure days. Mm -hmm. And we figured, well, each one will have their little rhombic. To, well, we didn't call them rhombics at that time. It was going to be, how do you use one sheet of plywood and get the most out of it? Sire uh -huh. has plenty of ambitions this way, and it kind of you know ebbs and flows as it does. But the school, I think, does draw quite a bit of intelligence in from well beyond the boundaries of architecture. Once you were settled in in Santa Monica, and were able to kind of draw, you had however much freedom you could keep going. Uh, one of the things that you ran into was a little bit of pushback from the students actually asking for more structure. Yes, they, they, they found that difficult and the faculty found it difficult even to work within the way that I, that we sort of agreed upon was let's have everybody in this one big space, mm -hmm. never mind differentiating by class, but uh, just that way they could learn from a more senior student here and there and we right. and then it was up to us as faculty members to move around, you know, in your normal crit. Well <laughs> what I what I learned very early is you don't change a lot of processes that people have been through and whether and that's the way, the way it wasn't. And I was about the only faculty member who enjoyed that way of, of, <laughs> of critting. Yeah. You know, I remember Tom Main immediately drew his group together and went into one of the seminar rooms. Mm -hmm. Because I think he felt he could get to them more quickly yeah. and directly that way. Uh, I kind of enjoyed the other process, so, so you know, over time it, it started to move back to the normal, normal way. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was interesting to watch what, what happened, and then the students started to say, well, first we had people walking into school, you know, the guys from Archigram and Chrysalis and Anybody else who was interested in architectural school uh -huh. would walk in and say, it's okay if I give a seminar? And what <laughs> I'd know, and I said, great, go ahead. Yeah. So they would, you know, plop down in the middle of the school, give a seminar, and uh, I thought it was great. When I speak to some of those characters, you know, Peter Cook, for instance, uh, Pretty consistently, there's a kind of fondness about, and I went to this place called Cyark, and it was so strange, and it was just a big room, and everybody was in it. And, and, so, and, and I, I'm sure part of it is that there, there's a kind of mythology that has built up around the school. I do think that even today, there's a certain amount of myth generation, not just in Cyark, but in general. I think that uh, cultural production always has a kind of version of itself that gets projected or that gets recorded. And you've been watching the school since it started. Yes. You've had a lot of different roles. So you were the director for 15 years. You were on the board for quite a long time. You actually had a stint as interim director between Neil and Eric. Uh, you know, so the, like you've seen the kind of ups and downs and you've seen various versions of the myth get constructed and probably destructed. And uh, what, what are your thoughts on that now, looking back at well, what, 45 years of this? <coughs> well. It, it depends on the person's personality, really. I mean, that, that's what makes the change. But no, we, I, I, my, my feeling was to give the school a sense of freedom, mm -hmm. both physically and, you know, uh, architecturally. That was re really kind of what I think was the underplay of why the school had sort of remained what it was. Mm -hmm. uh, of 
course, Michael grew up with the school as a student. Yeah. Uh, having gone to, I think, I think he went to Cal Poly before he came to Sark when I let him in. And uh, he had had the sense of what what he learned there, and would follow through with that. And uh, he ended up being, a, I thought, a very good choice because the making of things was expanded during his time. And Robert McGurian and Michael both were predisposed that way. And I think it happened at a time when we were in a state of recession in architecture. Mm -hmm. So a lot of students would come out and maybe they liked filming more than they liked architecture. They thought it would work better. They would do that. Somebody else would, would do great welding. <laughs> Became a welder instead of a, but still had the architectural mind mm -hmm. to work with that, which I think is a good, good thing. No two people could be different, as different as Eric and I, the school did, did fine in both occasions. Mm -hmm. And at uh, all times, I mean, I, I, you know, really enjoyed my time with Neil. Neil was a very good, uh, very good teacher, very mm -hmm. good ar architect. Very, you know, I liked them a lot. I think one of the things that makes Sark a very fun place to hang around is that it is often accused of not being architecture. Or there are often, you know, th that tension between architecture being something that we can define and know what it is and say what it is and identify who's not one, which you can really only do quantitatively, you know, do you have a license or not, have you gone to school or not, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but, but I think that that question, not, not so much are you an architect, but rather what is architecture is really, you know, it, it sounds almost hokey, but th that is what seems to be the driving thing at SciArc. Asking that question leads to new things. No, that, that's true. That, that was what what I call sort of the sense of freedom, mm -hmm. the, the sense of uh, invention, those kinds of things. Eric carried it to a further level than I, I would. What, what happens in, once Hernan became involved, when Michael Speaks brought him on to teach with him, was that's when the computer really came into Sark strong. Yeah. That's that's architecture. I mean, the the drawings that we see on the walls are beautiful, but they feel more for me a part of the film industry. I create architecture the other way around. You know, it starts with solving the problems of the site and the structure and the this and that before I really care about, in, in the program, of course, uh, care about anything else. So mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't come in with a great vision. People always want you to do that as an architect. If, right. they, if they think you're a good architect, what was your vision when you were doing this project? Well, look around. I don't know. My vision was <laughs> simple. I was solving a problem. I'm a problem solver. I'm not a visionary in that sense. I've spent a lot of time thinking about Cyark, and I've spent a lot of time in the building. And uh, you know, um, I do think that that kind of coming back to this this question of of oppositions, you know, like. Architecture is something we already know, and architecture that we, is something that we have to figure out. And what I think is really phenomenal about the school, in all of its iterations, and it, I think it has been very different places since 1972,
Oh, yeah. And, but each of those places, I think, a question that always would have been appropriate was, what is architecture? Or, and not even that, I think it's often asked a little bit more specifically. It's, what is your version of architecture? And the school is always organized as a kind of public forum. And what makes it go is hashing out that question among people who have, A, very strong opinions, and B, very different opinions. Mm -hmm. Looking back at the various iterations of the school and the various roles you've played within it, um, whether it be kind of founder, director, board member, benefactor, or key character in this ongoing myth that's being built. Uh, what would you say to kind of someone who is just coming into the school, say a first year student, and they said, what is this place anyway? <clears throat> well, I knew better what to say when I was directing it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I knew, I knew what, it, what I wanted it to be. Uh, but I didn't force that. I wanted to put out, uh, you know, I always knew where I wanted to go with things, but uh, I, I, and I wanted to try them in various ways. Okay, it became much more difficult later on, obviously, for anybody else. Uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, I, I taught with Frank Gehry. I hired him. He gave his first lecture that he gave in the university it was at our school. Mm -hmm. It was the same kind of stuff that was going on. And we, again, would crit in opposite ways. You know, yeah. I would, I would try to get the person to think in a, in a rational way. And, uh, or what I would call, I guess you maybe, you want to call it the Chris Alexander way at that time before. But, uh, and could you think in a lineal process to conclusion with reasonable answers to each place along the way? Are you a good problem solver, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Frank, Frank's at that time had, had, had finally come into his own feelings about things and uh, felt that they should mess it up a bit. Yeah. You know, in other words, don't think like that. Because he found for himself that it was much better for him to be free of that what he had been taught in school, and to really think the opposite way. And that was an answer he also gave me when he, we went to visit his house for the first time. He said, Frank, how do, you think about, how do you think about architecture now? And he says, well, whatever I used to do, I do the opposite. <laughs> well, you know, that's one answer to what your question is about. Uh, as you get new tools in, in, in the system, that changes it too. That made a difference. First, of course, it was, it was CAD stuff more than anything. But it still had a, a it still had quite gotten to, to the, what I would call more the, the difference between more of the, you start with a form, a formal stage and you work backwards or you start with the component parts in your work mm -hmm. up. I think five years out, Cyrix is going to be a very different place once again. Oh, sure. And uh, what would you say to us as the faculty going forward? What, kind of, what would your, be your, if you could tell us one piece of advice as to how to keep the place, I think not you, what you wanted, but what it has become? I, what think, would that I be? think you keep the attitude of freedom, uh, the idea that a lot of things are possible and depending upon what the framework is that one is working in and what is happening in the field as a whole, 
it will automatically happen to the degree that you take it. Mm. It should keep on growing. Well, I mean, we've covered a lot of ground, but I think that uh, for me to kind of rest on that notion of freedom makes a lot of sense. And I do think that that's what's driving the school. I just want to say thank you for allowing us to come over. Thank you for what you've done for the school. I think uh, none of us would be here if it weren't for you. Uh, that gets said a lot, but in this case, that's mm -hmm. just plain true. So Ray, thanks very much for meeting with us and thank you for watching the SIRC channel.